What up, Dapper Squad? It's your boy Darius back at it again with another movie reaction. Today we're doing Jujutsu Kaisen Zero. It is somewhat of a reaction. It is somewhat of just a impromptu good vibe thing that I'm doing with the squad. I did see this movie already. I must warn you. I know some people are going to be mad. This isn't a reaction. You've already seen this movie. It's just it's been six months since it came out in theaters. I want to watch a movie with the with the boys. I want to I want to vibe. As you guys can see, we're doing this live on Twitch. Make sure you guys come check us out live. We I'm going to try to get into streaming more. I've been slacking in certain areas. I know twitch.tv slash Dapper Darius. It's going to be a great time. I can already tell you firsthand this movie is amazing. I have forgotten a lot of the smaller fights and a lot of the smaller details that do occur. I remember some of the big things, but especially with 2023, October, a lot of the anime is coming right around the corner. Season two of this will be here before we know it. So it's a great refresher, great characters, great action. Super excited. I said we hop right into it. I'm not going to waste any more of your guys' time. Like I said, check out that Patreon for the full length, all that jazz. Check out the Twitch for the live streams, all that jazz. Jujutsu Kaisen Zero, the prequel. Let's get right on into it. Rika killed all three of them and stuffed them into a locker. Oh, this is what Jujutsu Kaisen's all about. That's why I love it. You can tell he's very indifferent about his power because he doesn't want to hurt people, but it protects him involuntarily, you know? Exactly, you know, he literally just said it. You would feel so internally depressed about that sort of capability. You just want to you die yourself, you know, to stop hurting other people. And that's my favorite part about the story is how we twist that around for the ultimate better. Oh, I love that. Tell me... I know it's hard to see a little bit, but tell me this animation doesn't look just absolutely beautiful. Like, Mappa already kills it alone in the show, but with a movie budget, it's not even funny. <sighs> oh my god, Rika's presence. I love it. <laughs> just immediately into action because he has a curse with him. That's his commitment. <laughs> Go, this could have all been avoided had Gojo just explained a little bit. Just a little bit. That's what I'm saying. Gojo could have avoided so much of this. <laughs> I love this dude. God, I hate love in anime. Only because it never fucking lasts. Oh my god, I did not need the splatter sounds. I did not need to see her shoe. If a child, any child's... Oh. I don't remember it being like this. This is creepy as... Out of the blood? It's played... I don't want to pause it, because we're all enjoying this, but it's played in a different unique style in this story but i'm always a fan of any story in which love or happiness could be peace as well is the thing that causes the hatred like without love there is no it's, it's similar to pain in naruto that's why he's one of my favorite could be my favorite villain in naruto is because without an attachment or love you're not going to feel the pain and anger when losing that thing such as like the jedi that's why they have no attachment so the fact that such an evil or such a curse spawns out of only attachment and love is it's such a yin and yang dichotomy that I love in stories. I don't know. Realistic as hell. Like, that's what wars are fought for. Love, you know? This is our first test. Gojo's more of a you're a hands-on learner kind of guy. Which normally I agree with. In normal life, against fucking whatever the flying fuck these are, I might disagree a little bit. Ugh. Ugh. The designs of the fucking curses are always interesting. I got goosebumps. I got goosies. Incredible. Tell me she's not the tell me she's not the goat. She cut herself. Oh. <laughs> Arigato. 
that is the thing that will lead to you. Changing your fate, your destiny, your life story, what's written for you. Maki can say from first-hand experience, this is how to do it. This will give you the tools, the power you need to. Okay, Maki, I got goosebumps again. Way to give him the... With the ring coming out, come on. This is this is kind of badass. This is kind of badass. Oh my god. They're just going to explode out of this man's gut. And I love how even though Rika is an extremely strong S tier special grade whatever curse, she's still like a petty child, you know? So the way she attacks and everything like that is very unique. Look at the, the inside of the veil with the blood. Oh my god. Like, look at that. That's so weird. I would be disturbed. And if you guys have seen Hunter Hunter and you know what little child I'm talking about, in the very last arc of the show, little children with mad power can be very scary. He is solo carrying Maki and the two kids, though. With no, like, curse energy to help him up. This is pure Yuta right here. Shouts out, my boy. I appreciate that. I can't lie. I'm way too excited for season two of the show than I should be. I guess it's a great show, but like, I'm way too excited. The treatment that they give this and just how dedicated MAPPA are, I'm so excited. How, is it crazy I already forgot that Yuta uses a sword? I'm butthurt. I forgot how badass this sword is. Mm hmm. That's some very tangible training. It reminds me of Hunter x Hunter and some Nen. It's one thing I love about JJK is how much it reminds me of Nen. That's a cool transition with a wooden training sword. Oh, she's like, okay. Time to teach this boy why I am known as the weapon specialist. She is so crisp with it. She's just clean. He was able to stop her. <laughs> Tuna. Never be distracted, my man. Never be distracted. Come on. <laughs> That's hilarious. You can tell she's giving him a fair shot, but she's really not trying at all. <laughs> oh my god. I can't get over that split. Oh my god. <laughs> okay. That's not what I, I did not expect that. Big, personally, but, you know, we ought to appreciate our small boobs every now and then. <laughs> I hate this guy, Panda. I love him so much. The little twirl. That's another thing I love about JJK. That was all the different fight choreo, like, the scenes and the... Uh, scenery the sets in which we can fight at like the first fight was in like the prison right the juvenile detention center now we're in a abandoned mall we've had caves we've had city streets before he is so overpowered but comes with so many restrictions that's why i love it it's so good yet it's like he needs to be careful you know Can't even imagine the pain he goes through, yeah. That looks like we're in Persona 5. You could tell it's a strong if only twisting off one of its limbs hurt him that much. You gotta get him out of there. We've seen even in the show. Season one that well technically this is a prequel, but you know Maki's always willing to put his life on the line for his younger students, you know, his classmates. Anyone, you know. He's a sorcerer. Through and through. And Yuta feels horrible that he needs to go risk his life for him. He's gonna help out. That's what we love to hear. Oh,
It's like Yuji with his imbued fist, you know? He just has it with the katana and it looks so badass. Yuta's moving quick too. He's got the agility. You know that you know that curse felt worried for a second there. He had to use his hand to block it. Yup, grab the throat medicine, and then Inumaki can totally handle him. Oh, he's straight chugging that bitch. That man's throat is minty, cold, refreshed, ready to be screamed through right now. Yup. God damn. He is bad to the ass. Shouts out you to grabbing that throat medicine though. Bad ass. You think about it, Yuta had a small little fire team up with Maki and Inumaki. Like he's got some experience. That's why I can't wait to see him in the future when he's, ooh, I'm so excited. Let's lower the curtain on the age of, oh. I don't remember all these, but I remember the guy on the left and I fuck with him. Him, I like him. You can tell, I love how you can tell it's colder season because of the scarfs and stuff, you know? God damn it! Whoa, he's making the move right now. See, now what the hell creature is this? It's a pelican. It's a four-winged pelican. He's like, by order of Yuta, my friend, right here. By Yuta. <laughs> Look at all the staff, the goat Nanami's back there. He's ballsy to coming to the, the headquarters of Jujutsu Sorcery and saying this to them. December 24th, Christmas Eve. That is insane. And think about how strong Rika has to be if he's willing to even put at risk a thousand curses, you know, for for Rika. That's crazy. And they didn't know he could kill bound or taken bound curses as well. That's huge. That's a huge secret to keep. Yeah. True. He's too uncontrollable right now. This is a good strategy, honestly. <laughs> I love that answer. Prove him wrong. That would be crazy. Grade one who can't even see him. Sheesh. That probably means a lot coming from Yuta, you know. <laughs> This man's the goat, and I know Panda's like mocking, making fun of her when she said when he says she has a shot, but I genuinely want them to be together. They would make a great couple. Her like super aggressiveness, him being like the, <laughs> the nice, shy one. That's what I'm saying. Come on, you actually have a chance. You till you're in there. The veils are so sick. Purify that which is impure. Oh, they feel it immediately. Oh. <laughs> what was his name like Miguel something like that it was I don't remember but I liked him I remember that have some fun and so he thinks he can have fun and take it easy which is so funny against Gojo Maki immediately confronts Ghetto come on God damn. Oh, yeah. No hesitation. You can't be distracted even for a second. <laughs> I know oh, he's clean with it. And I love how flow, like how baggy his like kimono or whatever he's wearing is. It just makes him flow so much, you know, when he fights. Panda's the goal. Look at him. 
But Ghetto is so damn badass. Picks up Maki Spear. The way they animated his head like imploding like that. Oh my god. The fact that that... Look at that fucking cavern. The fact that that can't even take Ghetto out of the equation is crazy. They didn't even take him out of commission for a second. Yeah, he loves that. All he wants is a world of Jujutsu Sorcery. Yeah, literally. Jesus, this guy is such an, a passionate extremist. This is the scene Okotsu walks in on. Oh my god. He's gonna say, like, run or get, get out of here. Yeah. The only time we hear Inumaki talk. Oh my god. Jesus Christ. This man is too crisp with it. Look at Rika and him. Oh my god. And they even have their bodies. That's so sick. Shouts out Rika. What do they call that when you can use curse energy to heal? Like reverse curse something fucking something or other? That's like a high level shit using curse energy to heal, right? No matter how much Yuta grows up, Rika's always going to have this like baby, super childish mentality to her. It's so interesting for a force of so much power, you know? Advanced reverse curse technique. An Inumaki fucking megaphone? He can imbue items with their curse? I don't remember this at all. Is it going to hurt his throat the same as Inumaki, or is it just like a one-and-done kind of item? Oh, that is so fucking sweet. That was so bad. Yup, it's a one-and-donner. So even with an item imbued with Inumaki's power, you still have to be very talented in Jujutsu Sorcery to be able to even use that. That's crazy. That fucking smoke. Tell me the end of this movie right here, this climax, is not one of the fucking most intense. Like, look at this. Imagine seeing this in theaters. I don't need to, but like, you know what I'm saying. I want to see everyone go ham. He's actually, because Nanami is his tutor, right? Or he was upgrading him in season one. See? Nanami, yeah, I like this dude. I want to see more of him. I also want to see the goat, Nanami. Come on. I like this dude. Reminds me of that one guy from One Piece. Who's with a uh, fucking Garp. She's the one who only cares about, like, money, right? Oh, my goodness. I will pay you whatever you need. I love that whip, too. That's the only thing I remember. It's, like, woven from his, like, ancestral line in Africa, right? With, like, the curse energy and shit. He's already used fucking half. The sorcerer is in my country to weave this one. That's so fucking gangster. If you can stall Gojo for 10 plus minutes of time, you got to consider yourself a gangster. Miguel gets the certified gangster badge for me. Look at this dude. Oh my God. Wow. He said, gotta go. And he can use it to traverse too. Oh my god. This man is throwing those fucking hands. God, bro, give me a second to breathe. Isn't there one called Playful Cloud that was in season one? That's not that, right? It's something different. Oh my god. That boy, Yuta, putting in work. That 3D camera movement around everything. The constant movement of it. Oh my, like, look at this.
the music, the camera movement, everything right now is spectacular. My boy is ready. My boy, look at that face. Oh my god. With this fucking song right now? He's still a new Jujutsu user. The Black Flash? With the fucking music? He's like, okay. You're not bad. I don't remember the animation being like fucking this. This is insane. There are only 16 curses. There are only four people and 16 curses that are special grade total. 4,000 over double of... Oh my god. The Maelstrom. This is that man right here. The GOAT himself. With the music that's playing right here? Come on. Show me something. Show me something. Come on. This man is a gangster. How to take the tie fully off. Wrap it around the ambu- The Black Flash is too. We know he held the record. The seven to three ratio. Oh my God. This dude is fucking iconic. Oh my God. The entire other school. I'm trying to remember all their names. I'm so butthurt. I'm fucking blanking. They're so sick. Miwa, I have them written down. Thankfully, I'm on my fucking JJK page. I, how are we going to go from Yuta to Gojo to Ghetto to Nanami over to Toto? Way too many goats. <laughs> Look at this dude. Yeah, imagine giving like Yuta 10 more years to train. Oh my god. He's willing to sacrifice literally everything in his entire life just to save his friends, you know? The people that somewhat changed his life. Is it not interesting that love from a curse and a human, like, this? they have such a special relationship. That's why they're so, so, this. With the triumphant music, come on. Oh yeah, if you're willing to give up anything. I've seen Hunter Hunter. I know how much power that gives you. You womanizer. Oh. It's pure love. Oh, I got goosebumps. Talk about a beam struggle. Oh my god. Like, this movie, because they hyped up Okotsu in Season 1 a good amount. This movie really made me hype for him. Like, Season 3, 4, 10, 15, whenever we want to see him. <sighs> God damn, am I ready. We were able to get rid of his special grade and his maelstrom. He wouldn't need any more curses if he had Rika. Look at them. God damn. Even though Ghetto's our main antagonist, one of the villains right now, like he is drippy and swaggy beyond words. It so makes sense why them are they were such good friends. You may have your issues, you may be an extremist crazy man, but I do believe his love for jujutsu sorcerers and sorcery is genuine. I'll give you that. I hate when they do this in anime. I hate it so much. I'm not saying I actually hate it, but I hate it. Like tell me what the fuck he said. God damn, that was one crazy fight. We did make a promise. We gave up everything. We would give everything we had to her. Okay, so it was on Yuta's. So that's why the investigation took longer. Which is what? Sugawara Michizane. Really? He's distantly related to Gojo. Three great... Super big shot. Oh, I want to see him. I want to see him, like, right now. You cursed her. 
Characters that accept guilt like that, even though it truly isn't really their fault, like it was pure accidental. He didn't do it with any intent. Characters that accept guilt like this are so much better people, you know? If Yuji wasn't our main character, I would be so down to have Yuta as our main character. It's not even funny. Like, don't get me wrong, Yuji's story is really good, and he just wants everyone to have a meaningful death. But Yuta's my boy. I can't lie. I forgot we don't have Rika anymore. I really completely forgot that. That actually changes the game immensely for the future. Beautiful, right there, to be honest. Talk about a send-off. It is December, or at least it was. Now we are got some winter, some snow action. That was a great ending to this movie. I must say, like, Yuta, like I said, this movie made me really like Yuta as a character. Now, this is one of the one of the things I vividly remember of the movie is the after credit scene because it gets me super excited for the future. Fucking Yuta and Miguel. Who would have thought? I don't know what that was you were just eating, but that shit looked yummy. His hair has gotten a little longer. I've never heard of that spice. Ooh. Look at all the black people. We got to be in Africa right now. Kenya. Oh, he's eating good. Man with the ultimate swagger. Yes, she booty. Wait, that's it? I swear he's like, come on, we got something. See, ah, the little fucking cliffhanger, little teaser. After credit, I hate it, but I love it. God damn it. Talk about a movie. Goodness gracious. That movie, I remember leaving the theater very, very, very satisfied, I must say. And watching it again, it's. It held up to my already exceeded expectations. The it was it was so well paced, yet did give time for characters to have the arcs they needed. And it didn't give a lot of crazy time to a lot of side characters because it they've already been established somewhat in JJK, but it just built upon that and added even more than what you get in JJK. And I love how a good prequel can do that without spoiling the future. Like Maki and getting her POV, you know, and getting another reason, you know, well, at least hearing it again as to why she's trying to be a Jujutsu Sorcerer and why she's in the situation she's in, especially with her relationship to Yuta and how they both relate to each other. I genuinely think they could be together later and I would be so happy with that. Like, it's not even funny. But also, we didn't get to hear too much about Panda because Panda's Panda, but getting a little bit more about Inumaki, what he has to deal with, how he's a descendant of the cursed speech users, how they've been a thing for an established period of time. The world building in the show, even though they really sporadically give you the pieces that you need, like, it's like I wish I could get it all at one time, I fucking I wish, but it's there and you can tell. Like, they talk about how there's only 16 special grade curses for special grade curse users um he was able to use one you have so many curry uh, i loved seeing the side fights that's my biggest bonus about this particular movie jjk is always gonna have amazing fights no one's gonna not expect that but the amount of side fights it had starting from maki and the elementary school to inumaki and the abandoned mall over to the war in kyoto and she shinjuku where it was nanami you had the the samurai dude you had nanami's uh fucking student you had all of the Kyoto school going ham. We didn't get to see Toto as much as I would like, but everyone got to, you had, you at least got to see some amazingness from everyone. I love that. Gojo and Miguel, amazing action. The animation, I mean, there's no even point in even me bringing it up. We all know it's fucking amazing. The soundtrack is one thing that I definitely noticed the second time watching over the first. Incredible. The beautiful scenes were beautiful. The triumphant scenes had triumphant. The action scenes had that typical rock insane the nanami and the yuta black flash parts were probably my favorite just out of the blue animation action i love the black flashes in the show and and in this movie in general like i said if yuji was not my main character i would be ecstatic to have yuta as my main character he is a great i was about to say he's a great mc but he's not our main character he's a side character so i love him as a character very excited for what the future holds very excited for Yuji and the rest of our actual squad to see him. Like it's very rare having a prequel and not even mentioning, not even mentioning our, our main cast at all. No Bara, Fushiguro, Yuji did not get mentioned. So I love it, love it, love it. Great movie, 
Hopefully you guys enjoyed. If you did, please leave a like. Let me know your thoughts down in the comment section below. Make sure to check out that Patreon for the full uncut version of this movie. It's a great time over there. Check out the Twitch if you guys want to watch future shit with me live. Great audience, great vibes, great community over here. Don't forget to drink some water. Tell someone you love them. Have a great day, Dapper Squad. Peace out.